its fabled beginnings in a tent, to the glory years of the late Oliver Wells, to last season's production of Macbeth. Currently, backing houses on Broadway, the new Burbage Theater Festival has been a beacon of quality for North American theater goers. This season, we're gonna blow your mind. My mind. We'll soon be announcing just which legend of Canadian theater will be playing the title role of King Lear. King Lear. King Lear. Check our website for details. Put your hands together for the man responsible for what is being called the hottest theater festival in North America, Jeff. It's toll when fate treats you bad. You used to be king, and now you've been and alone with your fool. You think you'll go mad. It's nice to take a walk in the rain. A stomp through a storm is what I'd advise. When people you trust tell nothing but lies and kidnap your friend and gouge out his eyes. It's nice to take a walk in the rain. You say are evil plotters A bit to pat to shower will keep you sane When all has been said and all have been slain It's good to take a walk in the rain for several hours Helps to have a howl in the rain without your clothes on Nice to take a walk in the rain most incredible evening I've spent in the theatre. It reminded me of why I wanted to be an actor in the first place. And I am totally terrified to work with you. God! Barbara hasn't changed a bit. She's so great. Mm-hmm. Great. Oh, I can't wait to see you. I've been fantasizing about my homecoming. Me too. What's wrong? Well... <laughs> Last night, I wept uncontrollably in front of 1,500 strangers. Oh. Okay, um, we can talk about it when I get home. Tonight! I love you. Mm, me too. Hey, everyone, tell Jeffrey you love him. Uh, well, I have, uh, 10 to 6 a.m. Eastern Stand. Oh, wait, he just walked in. Very good. Can you stand by? I'll be back to get a level in office sake. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> God, they really say cheers in England. So, do you want to talk about last night at all? 
No. Yeah, I know. The, the schedule's just been brutal. You're probably just tired. I know I'm tired. You know what I did this morning? I poured cream in the coffee maker. <laughs> I had to uh, rinse it out. It was all burnt. Richard, I wept uncontrollably for 20 minutes. Yeah, but you know what the funny thing about weeping? Because <laughs> things are going so well right now. Yes, it is funny. Jeffrey, are you sure you're up for this? Because, you know, this is the BBC. This is important. The Queen might be listening. Hello, Jeffrey. If we could just get a level before we begin. Richard, you can rest easy. I will not embarrass you or Her Majesty with any spontaneous weeping. Good, thank you. And Richard? Uh, sibilance. 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 Wakey, wakey. We have to go back to the hotel and pack. All right, where are we going? Oh, we're going home, dear. <laughs> My jobs? Seriously? That's all there is in New Vermont? No, 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 no. There are, are there is the Christmas Emporium. Mm. The Save More. And did I mention the chip wagon? <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to introduce you to someone. Ellen, this is Christopher Norton. Ellen is one of my oldest friends. And I couldn't take my eyes off you. It was like watching a young Vanessa Redwood. I said to my friend Sky, I said, who is this woman? Who are you? I'm just Ellen Fanshawe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who are you with? With? Exactly. Oh, I, I, oh. <laughs> I thought you meant, um, no, my agent's name is Olive Barlow, of Olive Barlow Talent. <laughs> I'll look her up. Again, it was great work. Barbara, call me. <laughs> that sounds so trite, but call me. What was that? Chris, he's huge. He's just an agent, but he has been packaging everything. Oh. Just Ellen Fanshawe? You need to learn how to promote yourself. Jeffrey, your productions are known for their bare bones style of staging, coupled with an almost unbearable emotional intensity. Oh, God, are they? What's your secret? I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I just do it. Any particular influences? Too many to count. What about the late Oliver Wells? Oliver? Sure, him. And every director I've ever worked with and every actor I've ever worked with and my mother and my father, my grade seven teacher, my little dog Ruffles, I've been influenced by anyone I've ever met. And I've stolen from everyone I've ever worked with. Didn't Picasso say something like, bad artists copy, good artists steal? Yes, and he also said, good taste is the enemy of creativity, and I take great comfort from that. <laughs> Joe Macbeth has just finished a smashing run in New York. I see here the Times of London called it perfect. <laughs> that, that, that's a ridiculous statement. Uh, but uh, greatly appreciated. Hi, Richard Smith Jones here. Good morning. Look, theater is dynamic. It uh, is constantly in change from performance to performance. So the concept of perfection is meaningless. I mean, it's, it's as meaningless as, as me saying, oh, hi, look at me. I'm north of the North Pole. This is meaningless. Yeah, but also, you know, I think a great uh, tribute to the uh, staff and team we've assembled here in New Burbage, which among other things has uh, resulted in a year over year uh, uh, profit increase of 350%. But uh, uh, Jeffrey, these types of notices, given your own history at the festival, must be immensely gratifying. Your next production is King Lear. How do you plan to top yourself? Jeffrey. Uh, this is absurd. It's far too absurd for whatever time it is in the morning, so I thank you, and I thank your majesty. Thank you so much for being on my money. And that does it for us. I want to thank Jeffrey Tent. Oh, how did it go? Where's Jeffrey? 
Oh, not good, eh? No, it, it was fine. Just that Jeffrey... Yeah, things are going well, aren't they? Things are going really well. They are! But he's... he's miserable. You know, he's... he's moody, he's sarcastic. I mean, I know he's an artist, but does he have to be an artist all the time? On the radio? Well, some people don't handle success very well. Speaking of which... Oh my god. Canadian business. <laughs> I used to dream of this. <laughs> Oh, where's Jeffrey? Oh, he's probably gone to bed. You'll see him this afternoon at the World Music Festival. Is that today? Oh, God, this schedule is killing me. What are you doing in so early? I always start work at 6. Oh. Good work ethic. What set are we on? Uh, Gloucester's Castle. OK, and what's handy? Well, we're in the main hall, so chairs, tables, wine jugs, goblets. Spoons? Yeah, there could be a spoon. All right, my first idea is spoons, all right? Uh, Cornwell, he's got the blood pack in his hand. Gloucester, he's got the eyeball. It goes a little something like this, all right? Upon these eyes of thine, I set my feet, blah, 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 and then... Uh. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I can light that tight. You know, lights down. Eyeball pin spot. That'll mean blood spatters on Reagan's gown. We'll need doubles. You know, that's that's one way. Can I have that for a second? I, but I just, I think Shakespeare had it down. It's way more fucked up if Cornwall digs him out with his own fingers. You know, I mean, what's more disturbing than this? I mean, imagine a finger going into the eye socket, you know? And then it's like, I mean, you would literally like hear, you know, the optical nerves, you know, uh, snapping. And you'd have, uh, you'd probably smell somebody else's hand. And then it would be like, okay, okay, ready, ready, watch this. Upon thine eyes of mine, I set my foot. And then it's like, you're like, ah, 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 you know, something like that. You know what I mean? Um, but I mean, still your choice, you know, thumbs or, thumbs or spoons. Thumbs, I think. Thank you. Next, uh, the storm, lighting, and special effects. Okay. Jeffrey, is it true? Richard said I could have anything I wanted. Yeah, you said the same thing to me. Okay, because I'm thinking of using the Sierra system. It's very expensive. What does it do, this Sierra system? <laughs> It's uh, very realistic. Too realistic? What do you mean? I mean, we can make it real, but is real what you want? Or is it like madness, right? I mean, you know, is the storm really happening? I mean, I know it's really happening, but is it like a crazy storm of madness in Lear's head, or? Nahum, what do you think? Hard for me to say. In my theater in Nigeria, we would shake a large piece of tin. It worked quite well. Canadian business. I used to dream of this. Of course, in my dream, it was just me, still. Richard, why am I here? I don't have to say anything. Words, thank them for coming. I don't think it matters. They don't speak English. Well, that's pointless. That's not pointless. We're the face of the festival. For God's sakes, would you put it away? Speaking of faces, any hints on who's going to play Lear? Is it William Shatner? I haven't decided. Oh, come on. What's to decide? He's Captain Kirk. Is this it for today? 
No. You got the marketing meeting at five, and you got the arts administrator's dinner at eight. No, no, I can't. What? Jeffrey, it's a national conference. You got it. You speak better than me. No, I can't, Richard. Ellen's coming up tonight in the which I do not want to run the risk of, you know, weeping in front of another room of entire strangers. Look, you are stressed. You're all stressed. Ah, uh, well, Los Perdidos, Los Perdidos, weren't they terrific? Obviously, this is a very emotional time for us. Uh, it's it's uh, been so moving to see all you foreigners, uh, artists and, and musicians do your thing all week long, but unfortunately, the festival is over and it's time to say goodbye, and that's very sad. <laughs> Very, very, very sad. Uh, but to you, we say bon voyage, which means have a pleasant journey home in one of our two official languages, French. Well, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll do the dinner. If you will all turn to page 17 in your annual report, uh, you'll see in, the, uh, in figure four that as of last June, our advanced sales, 21 days or longer, uh, continued its steady climb until we were 85 to 90% capacity. And that gave us a year over year improvement of 350%. So. Okay, any questions? Mr. Jones? Smith Jones. Smith Jones. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm a little nervous. Really? Thank you. <laughs> the financial turnaround is one thing. I mean, it's very impressive, but the artistic turnaround, I mean, that's really remarkable. You... <laughs> Could you comment on that? Comment? Well, uh, what are your influences, artistically speaking? Actually, I'm just stumbling around in the dark like everybody else. I think I've stolen every good idea I've ever had. But as Picasso is alleged to have said, uh, bad artists copy, good artists steal. <laughs> weeping. Wailing? No, weeping. Very, really heavy crying. You know what? It's nothing. I cry all the time. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's healthy, actually. Oh, look. Look at this. It's Chanel. Barbara made me buy it. It cost a fortune, but I can wear it to the opening. I'd really like to believe that. No, I will. No, I mean about weeping being healthy. Well, Chuck could forget about it. It's just a one-time thing. Well, it happened again today. So it's a two-time thing. Just don't obsess. You obsess about little things, they become big things. I don't think it can be sadness. I mean, it feels like sadness. I don't think it can be because, well, things have never been better. And why would I be sad when things are going really well? You missed me. <laughs> um, I missed you. I thought about this all the way home. I thought about it all through Barbara's party. I thought about it all through the second act of the final performance. <laughs> what about the first act? I was thinking about my dress. So I've got no Macbeth. <sighs> I'm hemorrhaging subscribers. <laughs> and my ad account executive is in jail. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying. <laughs> I know this is stupid, but could you sign this for me? Oh, ho. you know that guy? Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't have a. I do. Oh, you do. Thank you. There you go.
you go. Zoom the window. What does this say? Rock on. I didn't know what to put. <laughs> hey, where'd everybody go? Administrators, you know. Yeah. They're all home in bed with hot milk and their copy of the pact agreement. Right, yeah. Well, I am. Um, so I should get going too. You know, I may be down in New Burbage next week if you wanted to go for a coffee or something. Okay, uh, what day are you coming to town? Tuesday. Uh, or, or Wednesday. Thursday or uh, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my card. Just call me Mr. Smith Jones. Right. Oh, I'm so gonna get laid. Well, that's an eye opener. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no. I mean, I, I suppose this kind of thing happens, you know, occasionally. I guess we could be grateful I'm not weeping. No, this is serious. This is a problem. It's me. It's me, isn't it? No, it's not you. That's exactly what people say when it is you. Helen, would you please just calm down? I think this is probably, you know, stress-related. You're right. You're very stressed. Mm. You should see a doctor. You need treatment. Okay. What happened to the don't obsess about the small things? Well, it's become a bigger thing. This is our sex life. What if we never make love again? What if two weeks ago, in my hotel room in New York, was our last time? Ever! Okay, you want to know something? You are reacting in the worst possible way. This is the single worst possible way that a woman could react to this situation. Right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very, very sorry. It's common, isn't it? This kind of thing happens all the time. Wait a minute. I remember an email. A Chinese homeopathic remedy for men with penile problems. Richard! You forgot the check for the minister for the photo op. Anna, I said big, not gargantuan. Well, they had three sizes. I thought bigger would be better. Anna, it's not going to fit in there. Okay, how about the trunk? This looks ridiculous. It's, it's, no one will notice. You better get going. Uh, Mr. Archer's assistant has called. What? Wants to stick to Friday. Why? Why do I always have to change my schedule for him? I don't know. She said it's a really important issue. Fuck. Ah, shit! I'll get the jumper cables. You need a new car. I Archer. know, I know. Stalled again? Yes, he needs a new car. And how are we today? We are fine. We haven't cried yet. No, it's still early. Good, good. Uh, Darren's in your office. Oh, I ain't taking any. Sometimes it's best to just work through the tears. Anna, for God's sake! That's what I do. Darren Nichols. Groten van Netherlands, Jeffrey. It's chocolate. Of course it is. And how was your winter in Amsterdam? Fantastic. No tourists, just the Dutch, damp and pale. I swear the pronunciation grows even more guttural as the days grow darker. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it you were directing again? A musical based on Humpty Dumpty. Very dark. The Dutch went crazy for Oh, those Dutch. I must say, I've fallen in love with the musical genre. It's the art form of the common man. If you want to communicate something to the proletariat, cover it in sequins and make it sing. It's noisy, vulgar, and utterly meaningless. I love it. I'm very eager to begin. And we are eager for you to begin, and to conclude also. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm counting on your input, Jeff. Why the fuck would you want my input? I've come to realize that the repulsion we feel for one another may, in fact, be the source of our creative energy. Uh, Darren, I'm going to be real busy, King. Oh, come now. I want you 
at casting, at rehearsals, and at every preview. Jeffrey, our musical will blow the roof off this place. Danke. Tutsi. This is gonna be great. Sorry, new flashes. Can we take the picture? Yeah, I'll get more out of my car. Okay, look, could you hurry? Because this is the Minister of Culture, all right? Sorry about that. I'll make sure you get a really nice framed coffee for your wall. Whatever. You know, Minister, I thought you'd be pleased. Pleased? That we paid our loan back early? Why do artists make such a big deal when they exercise basic financial responsibility? We lend you money, you pay us back. You don't get a parade and a hand job. Okay, Minister, come on. Look at all these. Look. Each one a photo op. Oh, oh, this one actually bounced. Some shit little bastard from a poetry magazine brought this in and it actually bounced. The fucker. God, I think I'm a truant officer with you people. Minister, you know, I... You know I'm a taxpayer. Excuse me? Yeah, I'm a taxpayer, and I think that funding the Are arts... Are you talking back to me? No, Minister. Go to hell. Okay. Big smiles, everybody. Well, no more champagne and oysters. No more star-struck fans waiting at the state's door. No more Fire Island. <laughs> no more cheesecake. A couple of dreary-looking shrimp and a crusty old devil's egg. After all the reviews we got, oh, I hate it here. Hi. Hi. How did it go? My car stalled on the highway. Get a new car, Richard. He just needs a tune-up. You have a problem with success. What? What do you mean by that? I mean, you worked hard and you succeeded brilliantly. So treat yourself. Go out and buy a shiny new car. No. Used, maybe. Or, or maybe an off-lease with it. God, maybe I do have a problem. What I'm saying is that these recent problems, you know, the weeping and the... Down there. The erectile dysfunction. Ellen. That's what it's called. Well, thank you. Anyway, I think it's actually bigger. I think it's like me and everything. We've conquered Broadway. You're doing Lear, a play you love. Which I'm having some trouble with at the moment. What kind of trouble? Well, casting mostly. You know, every Canadian celebrity over 60 wants to do it, and Richard is pressuring me to go that way, and I don't know. I, I think I'm going to go and talk to Charles again. Charles Kingman? Isn't he a little old? Well, old is the right age for Lear. And it's not, it's, Ellen, I really need to talk to somebody. Oh, wait a minute. There's Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! Yeah, yeah. Can you believe it? How's your apartment? Uh, no, no, I'm kidding. It's fine. I mean, it's a little small and it's, Above a dry cleaner, so there's a smell. Oh, you can't stay there. Oh, it's fine. I told myself I will not be a diva. It's fine. So what if the windows won't open? Stay with us. No, no, I won't intrude on you and Jeffrey. Jeffrey won't mind. Well, maybe just until they find me something else. <laughs> I want to start torturing my director right away. Where is Jeffrey? Oh, he was here. Oliver? So, like, do you want to see it? It's parked just outside. No. Oh. So why are you selling this car? My dad got me an SUV. You should tell him what happened inside the car. Maybe then he'd want to buy it more. <laughs> Why? What happened inside the car? <laughs> well, nothing happened. Early, she says she doesn't remember. <laughs> okay, um, how much is your asking price for this vehicle? 5000 Oh, I don't know. I mean, I've got the money. It's not that. It's just that, you know, 
God knows my car is dying. It's just that you know, I've had a long time, so it feels like who I am or who I was. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's the way I was raised. Boy, but I'll tell you kids, success, whew, it's very, very, you know, we're doing great this year, but, you know, that could be dumb luck. And next year, it could all come crashing down, you know? And then I'm left driving around in some cherry red girly car looking like a complete fool. Um, 4,500? I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I've got another meeting. <laughs> and yet to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. Thou art wise as thou art beautiful. Not so neither. But I have wit enough to get out of this wood. I have enough to serve my own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain whether thy will or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my estate. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing whilst thou on pressed flowers dost sleep. And I shall purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. <laughs> Peas blossom, cobweb, moth, and mustard seed. And here come the fairies, all except mustard seed who's in dialysis. So we'd better take a break. <laughs> Bravo. Ah. I try. I'm not too early. Huh? No, not at all, Jeffrey. Sorry to bring you all the way down here, but uh, this is our last day of rehearsal. When are you open? Oh, uh, Tomorrow or the next day, Thank you. depending on who's alive. Thank you. I always order two. It saves time. I hate being in the middle of a really deep conversation trying to get the waiter's attention, you know? Yeah, of course. Tell me more about how you and Jeffrey work together. I mean, you guys seem to have this really amazing rapport. Well, you know, Jeffrey does uh, more of the art stuff, uh, and he's impossible to rope into the administration stuff, uh. so that really puts the uh, pressure on me to uh, <laughs> keep the theater solvent. Tell me about it. My AD's an ass-grabbing alcoholic. I've had to clean up more of his fucking messes than I can tell you. <laughs> but he's a genius. And married. Mm. <laughs> Hello. Enough about me. You go on. Go on. Well, you seem pretty interested in the rebranding, so um, I brought you a little surprise. <laughs> I accept, Mrs. Richard Smith Jones. Who knew? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally. <laughs> um, I had my assistant print off the daily box office reports. Now, uh, I know you can follow numbers, uh, so you can see how dramatically the upswing in sales came when it happened. I mean, it's it's not Tom Clancy, but it's pretty compelling stuff. What exactly do you and Jeffrey do together? I mean, does he ask you about anything creative? Do you even do anything creative? Oh, well, you know, we're all a band of brothers up at the theater. You know, just that some of us direct or act or hang lights. Asshole. What? You're just another of those fucking numbers guys, right? I mean, you do these tedious grant applications and funding and union contracts. It's dull. Your life is dull. Isn't that your life, too? Fuck you! <laughs> I gotta tell you, Charles, it's been a long time since I've heard people enjoy themselves in rehearsal. Uh, life is short, Jeffrey. Shouldn't do it if there's no fun in it. And when did you become so fucking sunny? <laughs> well, you caught me on a good day. <laughs> You come to tell me you're going with the movie star? <laughs> I just, I need someone to talk to. You know, losing my focus and uh, my usual resources have, uh, well, they are failing to keep me erect, if you know what I mean. Um, I want you to tell me about the storm. Well, it's Lear, isn't it? Lear, the king, stripped of everything, riches, loyalties, standing naked in the heath. Blow winds and crack your cheeks, rage, blow. Do you hear the storm? 
And then he sees his fool waiting for him in the rain, standing there shivering in the cold. And something in him stirs. In, boy, he says, go first. An incredible thing for a king to say. And then he turns back into the storm and he actually prays. Poor naked wretches, wheresoe'er you are, that bide the pelting of this pitiless storm, how shall your houseless heads and unfed sides, your looped and windowed raggedness, defend you from seasons such as this? He says, I've taken too little care of this. He makes the connection between his own suffering and the suffering of others. He's losing his mind, but on the way, he's finding his heart. Mm. You never thought of it like this. You can go right through the ages of man with Shakespeare, and in the end, he gives you this enormous gift of Lear to anticipate your own decay. Hmm. Well, well, well. You've just given me a peck of trouble. Oh. I want to do your Lear. Richard, where have you been? Stalled. Again. You're supposed to be meeting with Mr. Archer. He's been looking for you everywhere. Shit. Where is he? In the parking lot. He was about to leave. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I don't know what's going on. Mr. Archer! Mr. Archer! Richard, you're late. Well, then you should have fucking rescheduled. Sorry? Richard! I am the executive director of this festival, not your damn butt boy. You want a meeting with me? You tell me the fucking agenda. You got it? Richard, relax. Richard! This is bullshit! Richard! Huh? If you have a second, Richard, we'd like to give you this car to thank you for all your incredible leadership and vision this season. You saved the festival, and this is a token of our appreciation. Isn't that great? I am not King Lear. That's correct. I would have been a pretty good Lear. And I'm sure you will be someday. You know, I spent seven seasons at Stratford. I, some of the critics said that my Hamlet was touched by greatness. I'm sure it was. I'm just, I've decided to go in a different direction. A different direction from greatness? I'm going to go with Charles Kamen. Yeah, ha, ha. <clears throat> Kingman. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting choice. Bold choice. Your marketing department might even call it an insane choice. Look, I just wanted to say that it's been a real pleasure getting to know you. There's, there's, there's no need for that, okay? I'm a big boy. Eh? I'm a big boy. I can handle it. I'm a big boy. I thank you for your understanding. Oh, oh bless. Oh, please. Jeffrey, director is obliged to share his vision of the play with his lead. I mean, when I was doing Aviator with Marty Scorsese, you know, he discussed my role with me, you know. So I, uh, I wish you and Charles the best of luck. I appreciate that. And I sincerely hope you and I can find something to work together. Well, actually, <laughs> I have an ideal project in mind. Oh, yeah? What? King Lear, starring me. I beg you. Oh, Ken, please. You son of a bitch. You toyed with me. You dangled that roll in my face. I didn't dangle I any. I turned down Kenneth Welsh. Is that what you're hoping to crow to the world? No, not at all. I, I wasn't available anyway. You got that? I turned you down. Is that what you want me to say? Oh, that's the truth of it. Call my agent, you big pissant. Okay, I'm sorry. No, oh, man. Sorry. <sighs> okay. When you get to your opening night, 
just before the curtain goes up. Could you do me a favor? Anything. Suck on this! Oh. I've waited all my life for that part! You are a dream fucker, Jeffrey! I curse you, and I curse your production! Enjoying your new car? Guard the insurance on this kind of thing. Richard, you should feel very proud. You've earned it. Enjoy it. I'm a fraud, Hannah. How are you a fraud? I'm not a leader or a visionary. I'm a bureaucrat. I'm a, I'm a bean counter. Yes, but you're a good bean counter, and, and, you, and you care about what you do, and you're <laughs> detail-oriented. Oh, Richard, please don't cry. You're making me cry. <laughs> Who the hell am I, Anna? Who the hell is Richard Smith Jones? Okay, well, I can't stand this, so I'm gonna go away, okay? Um, you have a good cry. Get it all out. I'll be in the office, okay? Um, take your time. <laughs> God, help me, help me, help me! How can I be of service? What? BMW Assist. How can I help? Hey, um, Jeffrey, I would... What happened to you? Nothing. What do you want? Jerry got a new car. Congratulations. Yeah, I just sat in it and cried. I couldn't stop. Christ, maybe it's a virus. You know, all I ever wanted was for this theater to be successful. And now it is. <laughs> and I can't enjoy it. I mean, my whole experience of this is just is just numbers and box office and marketing meetings and, and you know, there's got to be more to a life in theater than this. Oh, God, I know that feeling. Yeah? Yeah. Look, <clears throat> look Richard, I don't think I can continue like this. I just, I can't do all these meetings and, and the fundraising and the interviews and the committee shit. I just, I'm no good at it. And it makes me weep, among other things. All I want to do is direct King Lear. Jill, I need you to do something for me. I am asking you to take over all of that other stuff. What? More meetings for me? Yeah. That doesn't help me. <laughs> Jeffrey, I came to you for help trying to figure out who I am and what I'm doing okay, here. Okay, get a grip. Take a breath. Why'd you come here in the first place? Do you like the theater? Yeah, I like the theater. Especially musicals. I mean, I, I love <laughs> musicals. Okay, this is great. You see, this is a very happy piece of symmetry because I hate musicals and I don't think I can sit in a room with Darren Nichols. I'm quite afraid that this time I will put something sharp into his frontal lobe. So why don't you go to the musical rehearsal and be me? You can sit in, you can give your ideas, you can connect to the creative process and you will discover what's going on in here. Really? Yeah. I could do that? Really? It's all yours. <laughs> okay. Sure. Hey, good meeting. That's a very good meeting. Yeah. Yeah. You feel better? Yes. You feel good? Yes, I do. That's great, because I'm going with Charles Kingman for King Lear.
to study. I can't go on tonight. I'm drinking with my buddy. I'm getting good and tight. Before they raise the curtain, I'll be higher than a kite. So call me understudy. I can't go on tonight. Tell the cast and crew to break a leg. Break a leg. I'll roll me out and up the bloody keg. Bloody keg. I need to ease the pain that life can bring. Life can bring. And liquor is what will hit the spot. The play is not the thing. So call me understudy. I think it's only right. My diction will be money. I'll ever find me light. Before the intermission, I'll be busy on a sprite. <laughs> so call me understudy. I can't go on. He can't go on. I won't go on. He shan't go on. I can't go on tonight. Damn right. <laughs>